Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be going over how to get some effects in game. We're also going to be going over how to get those physics onto the objects so that when you shoot an object it goes ahead and bounces around as you would expect. So we're going to need to go ahead and hop into Godot. And I have a couple particle effects here and you can see them inside of the effects under scene prefab. And if you just drag them out they don't look like much but that's because they have a bunch of children particle effects that all need to be activated. So if we select all of these and just hit fire you can see it looks something like a muzzle flash. And this goes with all of the different particle effects. So in order to get those effects spawning into the world, we are going to go ahead and need to modify the arms rig. There's a couple attachments here that I've already added. So these are for bullet slots. And if we go ahead and go to animation tree, let's disable that. Set the animation player to animation reloading. And if we step through that, you can see these bullets here in this little speed reloader. Because it's only going to be on screen for a couple seconds or even a couple milliseconds, I didn't really put too much effort into the speed reloader. And it's pretty much unnoticeable when you're actually reloading but you can see here the shells have disappeared from the chamber and they are here present on the speed reloader and when you go a little bit forward they appear there that's pretty simple and all i am doing is hiding and making visible bullet slots that's all it really amounts to you can see how the bullets are already in the cylinder as well as the speed reloader and all i'm doing is just hiding or unhiding those bullets that's it so everything's good there we can go ahead and hop back over to the animation tree there's also a couple attachments here for specifically the barrel end and i went ahead and added a raycast 3d there this raycast all it does is just raycast forward by about a thousand meters and it goes ahead and fires that off on collision mask layer one so beyond that we also have a node here that pretty much has nothing on it and we're going to go ahead and extend that node with a couple scripts so first off we are going to need the weapon effects controller so we're just going to put this in the code folder right next to the player body control. And if we go ahead and open that up, then we are going to need to go ahead and create a couple variables. So first off, we're going to need an export for the barrel end. And this is just going to be the reference to the parent of the Raycast. And then we're going to need an export for the Raycast itself, as well as two pack scenes for the muzzle flash and the impact effect. Now the impact effect, this is going to be the default impact effect. When you hit various damageable objects, we're going to pass a special impact effect for whatever object you hit. But for the time being, this is going to be the default. Besides that, we also do need one float, and it's just going to be impact force. And let's go ahead and equal that out to something like four. Eh, let's make it 20. We can always increase it later. Now, besides that, we do need two private variables. One of them is going to be a Boolean, and this is just going to be has round available, and this is going to be accessed via other scripts. And then the other one is current round count, and this is going to be internal. It's just going to be counting down from six and then reloading. Now, besides this, we do need to go ahead and create a class name, and that's going to be weapon effects controller. This is just going to let us access it from the player body controller. Let's go ahead and create a couple functions here. We're going to have function reload as well as function fire revolver and let's go ahead and call that reload on start this doesn't actually play the animation this is the function that the animation is calling to actually reset the variable so let's go ahead and do that so let's just set this to equal to six or whatever your magazine size would be and we'll set has round available equal to true now later on we would actually add into this where it spawns the empty shells and kicks them out using physics but we're not going to worry about that just yet so in fire revolver we're going to go ahead and instantiate a muzzle flash and let's go ahead and delete process function let's add that muzzle flash to the barrel in and then let's go ahead and set the global position and global rotation to the barrel end next we'll go ahead and modify the current bullet count or the current round count and has round available is just going to equal whether the current round count is greater than zero so if it's one two three so on and so forth then we have a round available and then we're just going to access that boolean from the player body controller in order to determine if we're allowed to fire now we are going to go ahead and check into an if statement if the barrel raycast is colliding if that is the case then we do need to go ahead and cache the hit location and we also want to cache the damageable effect that's the impact effect because we're going to modify this if we have hit a damageable object but this is just the default. We're also going to cache the collider that we've collided with. Now, first off, we can check to see if the impacted target is a rigid body. And if it is, then we can go ahead and apply an impulse to that rigid body. Now, I'm gonna take a moment to go through this real quick because this can be a little bit complicated. Let me expand the window there. So first off, apply impulse actually takes two variables or can take two variables. The first one is the force 
and that's just the forward direction of our ray cast multiplied by our impact force. And then the second one is the location. Now the location has to be local to the impacted target. So all I do to get that is take the hit location, which is a global variable, it is in global world space, and I subtract it from the impact target dot global position. This gets our local position. This way, if you shoot the bottom of the box, it bounces as if it, the bottom of it was shot. So next up, we're going to go ahead and instantiate that impact effect that we catched. And later on, we're going to edit this based off of the damageable we hit. But for the time being, that code isn't there yet. So we'll come back to this after we've created the damageable code. So let's go ahead and add a child. And we're going to add this child, the new impact effect, to this node, which is just a classic node. So as a result, the impact effect won't move around or anything weird. So let's go ahead and set its global position to the hit target. And for the rotation, we're going to do something a little bit different. So I want to get the normal that is the direction of the surface of the object we hit. So if we hit an angular surface, then we want it to point away from that surface. But then what we have to do is take if look point equal does not equal vector 3.0. This just weeds out any errors we might have. Then we use the look at function on the new impact effect. But you have to do a little bit something weird with the function. So if you happen to look at the same point you are currently at, you run into a lot of errors. So what I did was is I create a look at function looking at the global position, whatever its position, the hit location is, and adding the normal to that hit location. Now, if for some reason it is the same location or it is directly up or down we do need to handle that so within the actual look at function you can give it a direction so the up vector now normally this is just vector 3 dot up but if the absolute value of look at point dot y is greater than 0.99 that means it's looking directly up or directly down as absolute turns everything to a positive number. Then we need to set it to vector three dot back. This way the up vector and the look vector are not identical. If they are, you're gonna have a lot of issues. Just realized there's a pack slash up there. So we're gonna go ahead and leave that right there. That should work just fine. It'll look at the, uh, it'll look at the normal up vector. All right, did something weird there. I'm not entirely sure, but it didn't want to recognize the weapon effects controller. But for the time being, that works just fine. So if we go over to weapon effects controller, we can now see we have the barrel end, barrel raycast. So let's go ahead and throw those in. And then we also need that muzzle flash as well as the base impact effect. So we're going to drag in the muzzle flash prefab or the pack scene. And let's set that impact force to something like 40. And we'll just save that right now. There's a couple other things we do need to do to make this work. We are going to go ahead and create a couple events within these different animations. So let's go to the firing lowered and find the point right before the hammer goes down. And let's create a new call method here. And we're just going to select the weapon effects controller, scroll all the way down, and let's create a new insert key. And we're going to say fire revolver. We're going to do the same thing for firing raised, though it is actually just a little bit before the firing lowered. And then following that, we are going to go ahead and create one for the reloading function. So right here, where the shells disappear, I'm going to go ahead and create a call method right there for reloading. That way later on, if we do actually implement the shells kicking out of the revolver when it reloads, we can go ahead and spawn them right then just as the shells disappear. That way there will be a continuous track of the shells. So we're going to leave that right there. That should be good and we'll just continue on. First off, I would like to go ahead and create the damageable node. So if we go over to the test scene, you can see we have this damageable test here and all it is is just a rigid body. So let's go ahead and create the code that will allow that rigid body to tell the bullet that it has hit something, a creature, a door, something destructible, something like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a script that will be inherited by other scripts. So we're gonna put this under the enemies tab and this script is going to be almost bare bones. All it's going to have is an export variable of impact effect. This is the impact effect that we want to display when this particular object is shot. Now above that, we are going to go ahead and create a class name for this object, which we're just gonna call damageable object. And below that, we are going to create a single function called hit object. Now, what we do if we want to create a new damageable object, say an enemy or a door, we would inherit from damageable object. Instead of saying extends from node, we would say extends from damageable object. And then we could just create a new function called hit object with these variables. And whenever that object has the hit object function called, that inherited object would also work with that. So we go ahead and save that. That'll work just fine. Let's hop back over to weapon effects and we can go ahead and say if impacted target has no damageable. And just below that, we'll say var damageable equals impacted target dot get no damageable as damageable object. Then all we'll do is say if impact effect does not equal null, 
then we're going to set our damageable effect to damageable bot dot impact effect. Remember, we cached the effect up here so that that way we could change it if necessary and then just instantiate it with a single line of code right there. So not within this if statement, just below that though, we are going to go ahead and call the hit object command. Now the hit object command is going to take variables that are almost identical to apply impulse. The only thing I'm doing is I'm setting the hit location as a global space, just because making it local space is a little bit convoluted. And for future reference, I would like it to be global space. So we'll go ahead and leave that right there. That's pretty much all we need. We do need a single another script, and this is going to handle our effects. So when we spawn an effect into the world, say a muzzle flash or an impact effect, we don't want that effect to last forever. When the particles are completed, their animation, we do want it to be deleted. So that way we don't have any clutter and performance doesn't degradate, as well as we want to have a script that fires off all of those particles. So let's go ahead and create that. So we're just going to double click, say impact effect, and let's create a new script off of the parent here. And we're just going to call it generic effect handle. We're just going to put this into the code folder and put it under effects. All right. So within here, we're going to have a single function and that's going to be the ready function. So first off, let's create a new variable called max duration. And max duration is just going to be exactly as it sounds. It's going to be whatever the maximum lifetime of all the particles that are children of this node is. And then just right below that, we're going to create a for loop for each of the children. And if the child happens to be GPU particles, let's go ahead and tab that over, happens to be GPU particles 3D or is CPU particles 3D, we're going to set the max duration to the maximum of either the max duration or the child.lifetime. So just whichever one is higher. Then we're going to set child.emitting equals true. And this is just going to go ahead and make all of the particles that are children of this node go ahead and activate. Now, just below that, we're going to create a new timer using the get tree.create timer. And we're just going to make that timer whatever the max duration is. And finally, we're just going to connect up to the timeout signal of that timer, and we're going to say Q free on this node. Now, that isn't all I want to do because the muzzle flash in particular actually has a light that starts out very bright and then immediately fades. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a couple of variables up at the top. One is going to be optional light and it's going to be a light 3D. And the next one is going to be a light duration. Now, if optional light is not null, we will do something. But if it is null, we're just going to ignore it. This way we can use this function on any effect that we would like. So we go ahead and check to see if optional light is not equal null. And then we go ahead and create a new tween. And all we're going to do is tween the property of the light which is light energy down to zero. And we're going to do this over light duration. Now I am going to go ahead and make the Omni range go down as well. Later on, we may actually do directional lights or something like that. And we want that to be manipulated. So we'd have to add a net, couple of new tween functions here or a couple of new tween properties here. But it's important to note that if the light that we have selected doesn't happen to have this variable, just nothing will happen and it'll be just fine. So let's go ahead and save that and go back to our effect. And we're just going to go ahead and drag that generic effect handler right there. And we don't have to mess with any of that as this one doesn't have a light. We are going to need to go ahead and set the impact effect enemy as having the same script. And last but not least, we do also want the muzzle flash to have the same effect. However, this one does have a light. So we're just going to drag the light in there and let's put it the light duration to like 0.2 or something like that. We might need to manipulate that later. Now, all of that looks good. There is one final thing, and that's the player body controller. The player body controller needs to know when the arms don't have a round in the chamber. So we're going to go ahead and modify this player body controller script, and we're going to change a couple things. So first off, let's create a new export variable right up at the top. It's going to be a gun effects weapon effects controller, and this is just going to be a reference to the actual script in our arms. Now down here under is action pressed fire, we're going to change a couple things. Let's create a new function down below it for fire weapon. And all we're going to do is just copy both of these and put them right there. And we're going to replace them with the actual function call. Now, just below that, we're going to say if gun effects dot has round available. So if we do not have a round available, first off, we're going to make sure we return. But then we're also going to take the reload function and put it in right there. Later on, I have every intention of adding an animation for just clicking the hammer because the gun is empty and forcing the player to reload, as I really think that'll help with gameplay. But for the time being, this works just fine. So let's go ahead and save that. And we hop back over to player body and we can select the gun effects from the drop down. And if we assign that, we now have the weapon effects controller in there. So if we just hit control S, we should be able to go ahead and hop in and see what it looks like. All right. So we have the proper impact effects. 
We have the muzzle flash. If we fire off the roof, you can also see it bounces down and, and down below it bounces up. If we shoot the object, we can see that it bounces around just fine. Now the particle effect is not actually being used. So let's go ahead and hop over to the code and figure out why that is. Let's go over down to the damageable. Ah, so there is no particle effect right there. So let's just drag in the impact effect enemy, hit control S and hit play and see how that feels. All right, and that looks pretty good. And that's going to be it. That's all we need. Now, next week, I do intend to make the video a little bit shorter. This week, it got a little bit out of hand, but we're going to go over pathfinding. So we're going to go ahead and implement some basic enemy that moves around and just chases the player. That's all we're going to do next week. It should be a pretty short week. Nothing too complicated. Following that, we can go ahead and start working on the procedural animation portion of things, which is going to be very interesting. So not this week, but the following week, I'll be going ahead and creating out the enemy models and maybe just getting in a placeholder for the time being, but then at some point going ahead and creating the fully realized enemy models. But that's all for this time. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful week and we'll see you all back here next week for the next episode.